Well, hello, everyone, and want to welcome you to today's uh, webinar. Today is going to be a good one. We're going to talk about all kinds of some of the recent changes that have been going on with, with Amazon, and we're going to talk about some tangible things that you can do to, to move forward going in your business and ultimately how you can come out ahead. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Adams, and we got Matul Patel on here as well, who's going to uh, join us and speak a little bit also. Matul, you want to you say a few words and say hello? Yep. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah, welcome, everyone. Uh, glad you're here. All right. Yeah, those of us uh, who were here, we got like a full boat, we're saying earlier. So uh, if uh, we'll, we've got a few more spaces left, we're about to max out. So obviously an interesting topic in what we're doing. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's uh, just jump right in because I'm you know not one for you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Let's just get right to some important stuff. All right, what we're going to go over today, uh, we're going to talk about some of the recent changes, just about business evolution in general, some mindsets, some things you can do to, to, to stay on top of it and, uh, and be ahead of it other than letting some things get to you. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about some tangible solutions for ways that not only can you deal with some of the changes, but things you should be doing on an ongoing basis to totally beat your competition and then how to stay ahead and, and continue to raise the bar and stay ahead of your competition. And we're going to do that in 10 simple steps. But ultimately, the whole purpose today is, is just, I want you to try and think a little bit differently and reevaluate some things, but ultimately how you can have a breakthrough in your business and how you can get to the next level. And then we're going to take questions and answers at a bit. So there are lots of people who can talk and read questions at the same time. I am not one of them. So if you would be so kind if to keep your questions till the very end, then we'll jump right in and, uh, and take them and, and spend as long as we need to go over all of those. So as we stay on, uh, we are going to have a special announcement at the end. So if you hang along to that, we will announce that at the end. And for those of you who don't know, we've got a lot of people who have been to some of the live events. I see some names of people who have been to China and some names I don't recognize, I think, which always is a, is a good mix here. But... How are you found me? Uh, just a little bit of an introduction on who I am. My name is Mark Adams, and gosh, I've been doing private label stuff, seems like forever, at least almost all of my adult life. I've created, gosh, over a thousand products at this point, obviously not of them all on Amazon, but over the course of my business career and sold millions of dollars off and online. So uh, this is something that I kind of live and breathe as private labeling. So also throughout that time before the internet and so forth, I built up and sold six different businesses that basically all included private labeling uh, in one form or another from a chain of clothing stores in, uh, in some of the malls that were here in town and at a car bumper factory and a winery. So I've seen private labeling from, gosh, about every perspective that you can see from just the marketing side, from manufacturing to doing what we do on Amazon right now. I live in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I write on how to sell on Amazon, and I also help other people build their own brand, create their own products with Amazon. And I do all kinds of training courses and mentoring, coaching, videos, podcasts uh, called the Private Label Report as well. But we also take people to China and uh, help them find their own products there. And then we just host live events as well. Just everything pretty much private label. Also join us is that handsome young devil there is Mr. Matul Patel. So Matul, you want to jump in and talk a little bit about who you are? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> I started uh, selling on Amazon two and a half years ago. Um, made it my full-time thing, gig, uh, April of this year, actually. Um, so, you know, I walked away from the corporate job, which was scary and amazing at the same time. A lot of um, people in that situation, that had to be terrifying, though, but ultimately you're glad you did it. Oh, yeah. The, the, the freedom you have to make your own schedule is, is amazing, but... Uh, um, you know, you just you get you just get more so much more done. It's it's crazy. Um, so <clears throat> I, I I built my own brand um, that I launched in January of 2015 after failing with a previous brand. Um, but what I while I failed in it monetarily, I succeeded very much um, in in the realm of knowledge and fortitude and um, you know just sticking to my guns. Um, so I've, I've been able to use those, those that knowledge and um, everything I learned in this new brand and, um, and just continuing to grow it and expand off Amazon and try out new things and essentially try and stay a, a, a one step ahead of all my competitors. Um, but I've 
had the privilege of uh, being asked by Mark to speak at Private Label Live, which was a new adventure for me. Um, if some of you know me, I'm not a coach. I'm not a great speaker. Um, I'm actually <laughs> extremely nervous when I'm up there, but um, I guess practice you know, makes perfect. So uh, I've gotten better each time. Um, but I am honored to you underestimate yourself there. You do fine. And the big thing is you do well, you got knowledge. And of course, I don't think any of us is, is ready to go to Hollywood and be professional actors or whatever you want to call it. We're just, we're just merchants. And I think that's good enough. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I live in uh, sunny Chicago. Um, <laughs> I say that, I see that. <laughs> I say that with a laugh because it's cloudy right now and it's cold. <laughs> know. But, well, you know, you only got two seasons there, winter and road repair. Exactly. Yeah, those of us who live in the southern parts of the world or warmer climates, uh, it uh, makes you makes you appreciate living here. We know other people are in like zero degree temperatures and things like that, but uh, but that's okay too. Still, Chicago is a nice place. All right. A little said, that's who we both are here. So the tool's going to jump in a little bit, and I'm going to uh, show you a lot of information and things. But just had him on here because I think he's very knowledgeable, very good at what he is. And uh, some of the announcements we have at the end, he's going to have a little bit more to, to input on that. But let's get started with some of, the, some of the tangible things. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is dealing with change. Recently, uh, obviously, Amazon has made some changes in how they do reviews um, and how they do some things. And we're not going to spend a lot of time going on what's happened because it has. So, you know, over this last period, we've had a lot of people who the reactions have been all over the board. Some to, hey, it's not a big deal. To some, it's they go on full-fledged chicken little on us and they think the sky is falling. And it's funny when I see those reactions because I think change is inevitable in business. And I think you need to be prepared for it, and it'll change again. And, you know, the good news about change is, whether well, the old saying goes, the only thing that's constant is change. And if you just operate under the premise that Amazon does what's best for Amazon, and ultimately if that's pretty good for them, it's pretty good for most of the rest of us, I think you'll be okay. Because I think if each of us were running Amazon, I think we would have made some of the same exact decisions they had made. But ultimately I think when you deal with change, first thing you have to do is you just simply have to accept that that change is a good thing and successful people prosper from change. Change is really all about mindset. The reactions we've had since the announcements have been doom and gloom. Uh, we've had some people who have already fallen out and given up saying, I just don't want to do this. To we, to, to coincidentally, a couple of the contacts I've had with people who do quite well, they kind of said, man, this is a good thing because this is going to wipe out all the weak people. And so I think you have to really just sit back and take a deep breath when change happens because the natural tendency is to overreact, to go glasses half empty, to, to, to really look at it as, as like the sky is falling. Maybe that's a, a natural tendency that we all have. But if you take that deep breath and go back and realize that successful people want change because they know that they're willing to do the effort that they can keep up and that a lot of people will drop out even at the slightest of change. So anyway, I wanted to put this part in here, and this is obviously nothing tangible, but I believe if you ever heard me speak before, I could probably speak the whole event on mindset and positive thinking and all this kind of stuff because I truly believe that's at the very core or the very foundation of this business or any others. I've seen people, I mean, this is a business where we all know doing it's all doing the simple things well and doing them repeatedly. However, if you don't have the right mindset going in, it sure does, does be a lot harder. So when I first got these emails and saw the things, I thought, geez, that's just, you know, that's a change. I'd rather not change, but it's inevitable. And I, you know, I thought about it for a little bit and then the next day people went berserk. And then as time has gone on, people have realized that it's not the end of the world and there's no need for chicken little here. So anyway, I, I don't want to touch on that. But I do believe that's important for you to take as a foundation in your business. And if you can accept that as your foundation and premise, then as the old saying goes too, the rest are just details. So let's talk about winning the change game. When that happens, some tangible things, the first thing you do is stay calm because your natural tendency is going to be to overreact. You got to stay positive. You got to stay proactive and persistent. Weaker people, we know we're going to fall out. The people in the fringes are going to go away, and that's just going to clear more room for the rest of us who are going to work smarter and ultimately make better decisions. Again, little business, or this is a business where the little things you've got to do well and you got to do extremely well. This is not, we're not 
brain surgeon and we're not rocket scientists. We've got all these complex calculations and things that we've got to do and 87 things have got to work before something happens. This is do the simple things. Well, there's, you know, it's funny when all these changes first started, I actually had some people in here and it's kind of sad. They were spending all this time and they were making posts cause they were doing some sneaky backhanded things, trying to figure out the algorithm, trying to figure out, okay, we're going to outsmart Amazon. And I'm watching these two people go back and forth and I'm really feeling sorry for them because I'm thinking they completely are missing where they should be putting their time efforts and, 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 and work because they're not going to outsmart all these mathematicians, these PhDs, these, these high level IT people go in, just do the simple things. Well, forget about the magic bullet stuff. These are the same people who would probably spend a gazillion dollars buying a pill that says you'd or diet pill that says you're going to lose 50 pounds in a week. Well, we want to believe that stuff, but down deep, we know it's all not true. Again, come back to do the simple things well, and you'll be fine. Um, here are some tangible things that we can do to get going and, and kind of adapt to some of the changes. And let's just, I'll put these together and kind of 10 steps to get you going. The first, I want you to think of your Amazon business as a long-term strategy. I don't know how many people look at this and a slight little bit of change they consider getting out of the business. I don't understand that. If you have money invested in the stock market and you have one big day where you get a, a loss and it's all over the news, I don't think you necessarily have the mindset to where you're going to liquidate all of your stocks and then, and then cash out. I'm sure some people do that, but ultimately that's the worst thing to do. And if you're really have the right mindset, you think this is a good thing. This is where you put more money into the stock market, right? What we're trying to do is we're trying to build a retirement fund, an annuity that pays every day and is consistent. That's really where we're looking to do this. And in any type of a business, when you have a long-term strategy, you're really not looking to, to get all enamored with the minor, minor little changes and the small little blips, but you're trying to make better choices that, that diversify what you're doing over the long run. I know this is all esoteric stuff. Mindset is something that's like, Mark, tell me what to do. But again, I'm doing you a disservice if I don't set the foundation up to doing this, because if you're not committed to your plan, you're susceptible to making short, bad, or, sh or bad decisions that are seemingly only good in the short run, which are going to affect you in the long run. I had a retirement uh, or a, a, a planning financial planner, I guess it was. We were having a conversation one time, and he, he's wanting to do all these complicated things, derivatives and stocks or puts and calls and things. You know, I'm trained in finance. I understand what he's talking about. He knew I understood those things, which I guess is why he was telling me about them. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, this sure does seem to be a lot to keep up with. And I'm thinking, why not just put money in the S&P 500 index, which is like a mutual fund and, you know, doesn't matter. I shouldn't get them going off and all this like it matters. But, you know, you put that money in there, you leave it, and typically over any historical period, it's outperformed the stock market. Why not just do that and kind of go, you know, Ron Papil and set it and forget it on them? And he just couldn't process the fact that I was suggesting simplicity and a long-term strategy. And because he just it didn't register with him. And that's how I think for those of you who've ever heard me speak, when I talk about the dumber I get, the more money I make, or the simpler I keep things, the more money I make. Well, the first starts out with a long-term strategy. The second thing in this too is that as things do change, that doesn't mean you're not open to other strategies. I mean, if we take a look at where we are right now, most people are creating small, lightweight items, and they're inexpensive to create. And you got to have lots of volume to make money with them, but you also need lots of reviews to get those items ranked on the first page. That seems to be the consistent theory pre-Amazon change. Well, okay, let's talk about some other things we could do. What are some other strategies? Well, all right, I was sitting around thinking about this when I was putting all these slides together. I looked around my office, and I got a leather chair in here. And it's, I don't know what I paid for it. I'm guessing I probably paid $1,000 for it. It's a nice brown leather chair. And I'm talking, it obviously doesn't fit the criteria of a typical Amazon item, but it's, it's, it's heavy, it's big, and it had to be coming in by sea freight, I'm sure. But I bought it from somewhere. Somebody had to pay to bring it in. Somebody made money on it. You know, that's not something that's been on the radar for most people. But what about this for a second? Let's take this as an example. Let's say this, this chair sells, sells for $1,000, and I sent some to Amazon. I probably wouldn't have to buy that many. Let's just say I bought the item for $200. You know, I don't know what it'd be in China, but let's say $200. You'd have your Amazon fees. Let's say it's $300. Let's say you made $500 on a chair. But let's just say you only sold one a week, for instance. All right, that's still $2,000 a month. And if you could get that at a reasonable quantity, that still would make sense because ultimately all of this is what are your total dollars. 
but so many people have blinders on would think, well, let's not sell that because it doesn't fit the criteria as taught currently. Well, things change. Open your, open your eyes, take the blinders off and look at things like that. Maybe it's time to go back and reevaluate things that are bigger, things that are heavier that you do have to come in by sea freight. But in that example, I don't think anybody would complain about making $2,000 a month selling chairs. You know, it's just, and then, you know, go find five other items if you want to make 10 grand a month. The other thing too, I don't think is such a bad idea is, is everything now we're trying to make a certain quantity of items. I mean, it seems like most people want to sell somewhere 10 a day or plus to get to a BSR that's maybe 10,000 or below. Well, there's literally millions of items on Amazon that maybe sell that you could sell one, two or three pieces a day that is in not a high volume category, but you only needed maybe 10 reviews to be ranked fourth on the page. For instance, you know, you can certainly go get four reviews anywhere. You know, that's not a hard thing to do. So if that's the case, maybe in that item, all the sales and, you know, maybe it ends up adding up to be $500 a month. If you could just go find a product, low quantity, inexpensive, and still make $500, what if you at least release 10 of them and you only needed 10 reviews to get listed or you needed 20 of them to get listed? If that's the case, is that a, that's another strategy that I don't think is a bad strategy. I mean, the thing that I want you to walk away from here is that there's lots of different ways to do this, and I don't want you to think in the way that we've done now. And again, everybody gravitates towards what's the, what's the, the easiest thing to do, and that's human nature. But I think everybody, we live in a world somewhat of a, of a copying process, a copying society. Open your mind up to doing other things and, and, and whatever else here. And again, Matul, do you, do you have any thoughts on this? Because I think this is one of the things that if you get your foundation right and you know the strategy that you want to use, the ideas you want to use, I believe the rest is downhill. And I think I don't want to skip over this section because I think everybody is conditioned to believe a certain way. But I, I'm, I'm thinking take the blinders off and, consider this or what, what are your, what are your thoughts on what we're talking about here? Um, I, I'm in complete agreement. I mean, I, right now, like, you know, everyone comes in and they're, they're getting the cheap items and things like that. And what I've noticed happen going, you know, recently in the last six months is that the people who are, um, you know, posting about making it, you know, being successful are the ones who have higher price points. And I always see it because, you know, they do the screenshots. And I was, the, the thing I look at, it's funny because everyone looks at sales. I look at price. Um, and I always notice they're like 30, 40, 50, 60. It's always higher price stuff. And so, um, you know, that, that's, that's the thing. Like, it's, there's more barriers to entry, um, you know, because it's a higher price point. It's, there's a little more shipping um, complexities involved. But those are solvable issues, though. Right, and what's what's the funniest thing is that from if you've never done it, it seems like it's a mountain. But once you've actually done it once, you're like, oh, that was actually just like a small hill. You know, like it, it's actually very easy with everything that's you know we have like freight freight forwarders and things like that. So nothing is really that big of a deal. It just it's all matter of perspective. Sure, um, and that's why I wanted to cover this because I wanted to show people that your business is it's nice to have reviews. But your business is not dependent solely on reviews if you look and doing things in other directions. We've just done things the last couple of years like we did. Both Matul and I were around before review groups. So this is some things that you had to do before it, you could get the, the plethora of reviews and the ease of reviews that we were able to get up until recently. So I just, I just, I want you to open your mind. And I really hope right now, if you're sitting there listening to this, you're having an epiphany because there's lots of ways to do this business and any of them will work. And whatever your total profits are, that's that's ultimately what matters so i don't know. let's think about manufacturing in new ways you know again if we're going directly to the source i'm a big believer that in this business if you can find the right product and market everything else is downhill and most people will talk about how important it is to find the right market i think that goes without saying however the second part of the equation is being able to effectively manage inventory getting your products at the right place dealing with the right suppliers and I don't think most people go into this area enough, one, because I don't think they understand it or have done it, but two, it just, it just doesn't seem to resonate with people because they really don't want to hear it. But if you think about this, you can go directly to China in the Canton Fair. You can go tour factories. You can go do different things. This is really only a factor of money and time and effort that's preventing some people from doing this. But again, every time you have money, time, and effort, 
it's a barrier to entry to other people. And instead of thinking of, of simple products that you just go to Alibaba, find it, change the color, put your label on it. What if you went to some of these other countries and then started looking at different products or had them made completely from scratch? I actually uh, got an email from somebody the other day that says he was an engineer and he said he could show me how to create mold, not I mean like you know, the process of how to create molds and different things to create different products. And maybe that's something that's on the horizon for some people. But I think it's also time now to reevaluate and look at buying some products from the U.S. if you live there or Europe if you live there, as opposed to the cheap production items in China. I think there's room for both, but at least exploration, because you may find some of the advantages of faster turnaround time, lower quantities uh, make up for that if you take some of these other strategies that we just mentioned. But the other thing, too, is uh, sourcing agents. I mean, if you can effectively buy better, than other people, then 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 you're better off because sourcing agents. For those of you, I mean, it's self-explanatory what sourcing agents are, but I suspect that most people have never used them. And really, like what a sourcing agent is, is kind of like a real estate agent who helps you find a house. A sourcing agent, purchasing agent, product sourcing agent. You'll hear various terms. You will use them to help you find and identify suppliers in whatever country that you employ them. So they will sometimes be paid by the supplier. Sometimes you pay them. We're not going to get into all that here, but I want to throw that out here is that if you're, if you're full of, or your, your time is full and you don't have the time to go find products or you don't like that part of it, you got other options here because I guarantee you they're introducing you to people who are not necessarily maybe at the Canton fair or who are not on Alibaba. So you're being able to source from places that are not so much in the general public. But a good thought in this nonetheless. I want you to rethink maybe some of your current quantity strategies. Now, it's easy to say just sell more. You know, by selling more, you can order in bigger quantities and you can get lower, lower cost per item and even reduce your shipping cost per item. Well, that's easy to say. Just snap your fingers, wham, bam, and that's done. Well, it's not necessarily as hard as you might think if you sit down and think it through. What if you expand into other Amazon markets? I believe 99% of sellers only sell in one market, and I've yet to understand that, but it's something that if your item sells in the U.S., it's probably going to sell in the U.K., it's probably going to sell in Germany, it's probably going to sell in Japan. So I don't, I don't understand why when we talk about volumes that we don't look into going to other markets. Again, not going to touch on that a whole lot other than to show you that's just one of the possible tangible things you can do to increase your volume because there's other sites like eBay. Jet is coming on. For those of you who are not aware, Walmart just bought Jet. So I suspect in the next couple of months, we're going to see some major changes in Jet, and Jet's going to become a, a much more popular site than it is now. You could do your own e-commerce site. You could do things to where you could sell your own product wholesale uh, to brick-and-mortar retailers. Before I started doing Amazon or some of my other businesses, I did every one of these things short of the, the Jet stuff. Because I would go stand at trade shows and try and sell my product wholesale to other stores. I'd go knock on doors as my own sales force and try and sell product. I mean, I was doing e-commerce as early as 1999. And I had my own retail store. And, of course, that's the last thing you want to consider doing. But ultimately, you got options. And you're not limited to selling your product just on Amazon. I think it's time to, you know, you've always heard me talk about having an Amazon brand as opposed to just products. But I think now you got to think of yourself as a wholesale product company and, and how you can do things. But Tool, I know you had somebody who bought uh, quite a few of your products online through, through, through Amazon. And then certainly I think through your own e-commerce site, uh, tell us about what it's like to go to your own e-commerce site and start to diversify off of Amazon. Um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm still in the beginning stages of my own e-commerce site because I've been doing it myself, obviously. You know, it, I think it would be a different story if you, like, hired some expert to build your website, but I just didn't want to spend the thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, but what I've learned is it's, it's a different experience. Um, you have so much more control. Uh, you know, you, can, you, you, you own the customers that Amazon doesn't, and what I what I've started to find is that there are actually people out there that buy lots and lots and lots of products off Amazon. Um, I think the it's it's actually really funny because I know grow, you know growing my business on Amazon and listening to all these um, uh, experts and coaches and stuff like that. You know they they talk about how amazing Amazon is and 
you know, e-commerce is dying unless you're on Amazon. And, you know, essentially, like, if you're not selling on Amazon, you're not going to make any money. And ever since I started expanding, I, there's, like, thousands of people who just make millions of dollars on their own e-commerce sites. And um, most of them don't even have inventory. It's it's ridiculous. So, you know, I think the natural progression for anyone who is on Amazon is, um and this is as you know, Shopify is a great option just because of their connections that they have with Amazon. Um, so anytime I make a sale on my website, Shopify will then tell Amazon, and Amazon will fulfill it. Um, so it just it's makes it nice and seamless. And, and for those of you who don't know, Shopify is just a platform that you can create an e-commerce site. It's just a website creator kind of, for lack yeah. of a better word. Yeah, and it's got its own like checkout process. Um, but yeah, you can you know you you can start advertising on social media. You can do Facebook ads. You can do you know other things, um, and send people to your website. Right. And, and you know what's actually funny, Mark? Just just a just a note. I actually was looking for a product. I found it on Amazon. I ended up going and buying it from the the company's website. A lot of people and do not that. Amazon. Yeah. And so it's. It's, you know, Amazon isn't the end-all be-all. Right. Well, too, you can certainly have Amazon fulfill it, even if you're getting orders from your e-commerce site. But ultimately, you know, we could spend hours talking about e-commerce because I did e-commerce before I did before I did Amazon. But, you know, the thing about this, ultimately, whether it's eBay or Amazon or your own e-commerce site, you're standing there at a trade show taking retail or orders for their retail stores, wholesale orders. Diversify what you're doing. Because if you had all these things set up right now and you had a major change at Amazon, you're probably not going to overreact because you know that you're well diversified. And that's ultimately what I want you to think when I say rethink your current quantity strategies. If you're doing all these other outlets, every one of these outlets is going to benefit because you're buying in bigger quantities and probably have a lower unit cost because of your volume. So that's just kind of the, the strategy I want it really for you to take away here. Well, let's talk about actual market, actual marketing. Matul mentioned running ads and different things a second ago. Well, you know, what if you had a web page that collected emails in exchange for coupon codes to receive a discount on your product? When I started all this a couple of years ago in a brand, you'd create a website and you only had the multi-use coupon codes. You didn't know any better at the time, but you give out a code once they fill out an email. And gosh, they could have wiped out your inventory and all this kind of stuff now. Well, now, you know, two plus years later, you've got software that gives you single-use code. So when they sign up for that email, they get a single-use code. And you don't have to worry and check everything of when, you know, that somebody's depleted your inventory. And what if you ran ads to that page and people who got the code would be sent directly to Amazon? Most will buy and even some will review. Because, again, the thing about this, whether you're running ads to a landing page in this, in this case that gives them the code to go buy it at a discount, you're still going to get a bump in your sales and your conversion rate and your listings are going to go up because you're still going to get some reviews off of that. And then once you have their email list, you could market to those customers repeatedly. So, you know, one of the things I think about this too, there's nothing new and revolutionary about what we're talking about here in, in this fifth option, except that most people didn't do it because they became so dependent and reliant on how easy it was to get reviews. Now that that's changed, this is a strategy that I think is worth coming back and, and looking at at this point. Think about this for a second. Let's just say you had an item that selling for $20. You know, what if, if you were running ads and instead of doing it for a penny and a discount, what if you were doing 30% off that item? I don't know. Let's just say it's, I don't know, you're selling it for $12, $13 in there. You know, you spend some time running ads, you got product cost and everything else, and you had it worked out and figured out to where literally every item you sold through an ad was basically break even. Didn't cost you anything. It would then allow you to order in bigger quantity so you would ultimately get cheaper item cost. But more importantly, your sales and conversion rates are going to go up on Amazon if you're doing things like that, and you're going to get higher listings. And yeah, your profit percentages and some of those things may change, but you're going to ultimately have more money in your pocket because you now have higher listings. So this is something I know I'm going to address a little bit more going forward, but this is something I think we're going to have to get a little bit better in, in considering running ads for our business because ultimately this is how any business works. You know, there's many ways to do this. Facebook comes to mind first. Almost every social media platform has some type of, of ads program, you know, all the way down to Google ads. And the other thing is I think about this from time to time, 
I'll bet you there's not more than one person on this call, if there's even one at all, who has a YouTube brand channel that shows video product demonstrations of their items. And I'm going to ask that question maybe when we get to the end. Is there anybody actually who do, is doing that? And I'll bet you the answer is no. And, you know, the thing about that, it's free to do. You don't have to be Spielberg to create the, <laughs> you know, to create the, the video. You're basically just talking about your product and letting people see it. And again, the beauty of that is, as Matul mentioned earlier, people are gonna gonna go off of Amazon looking for your items. Videos on your product are gonna rank when they're when they're typing in the keywords for your item, and all that's gonna do is increase your conversions as you send them back to Amazon or either to your to your e-commerce site. So that's something that most people have a a camera in their in their purse for women or pocketbook for men, not pocketbook pocketbook for women or their pocket just for men somewhere in there that uh, that you've got a really, really good video camera that you can take brand brand videos of. But I don't know why more people don't do that. Again, I want you to take away from this, there are tangible things you can do to evolve from the changes of being so dependent on, on reviews. The other thing I go off on rants on sometimes is, <laughs> is the lack of pictures and quality that most Amazon sellers have on their page. And again, they'll spend thousands of dollars on a product, but they won't spend any money on good quality pictures. And I just look at it and it saddens me to see these people I talk to. I don't know. I bet you I've coached a few hundred people, maybe 300 people at this point. And when I look at their products and pictures, some are actually very good, but most are not. And I talk about it and say, well, I just didn't want to, didn't want to put the money into it. And that, that saddens me actually, because if you put the money into it, you'd get that back many, 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 many times over. And then the other thing in this too, is that change your pictures from time to time, change your copy, see what happens. Most people, even though they believe it's a good idea, don't split test their wording on their page. They don't split test their keywords. They don't test. Uh, everybody who, who's ever heard me speak knows I like the program Cash Cow Pro, which is a, the, the management tool that I think is one of the best softwares out there. It actually allows you to test and track your changes on your page once it's set up. I mean, everything is there for you, and it's a very, very inexpensive thing to be able to do. But Again, I want you to go back, look at your pictures, look at your copy, and ask yourself, can I make that any better? Because if you got people to your page, you know, instead of trying to get more reviews and get more people there, if you can improve your conversions by having better pictures and copy, ultimately your money's going to go up. So it's easier to do this than to get reviews anyway. Well, let's talk again about second about reviews, since that seems to be what everybody's interested in as we've had some changes. Reviews. This we've kind of gotten. We've kind of gotten almost addicted to review groups, different things, this kind of stuff. And yeah, it's easier to to have them than not. But a lot of people prosper before, and I believe will prosper without them. What I think is going to happen, in my gut feeling, until we get more information and more time comes in, review groups are going to evolve into deal sites or even giveaway sites. And I think, as we mentioned just a moment ago, even if you give away some of your items for a dollar or a penny or whatever you do, the the actual tangible sales and the increase in conversions is still going to increase your listings. Because every time we do something with a review group, you know you get a bump. If you're a seller, you know you get a bump right after the product's released. And then if that's the case, then the reviews just kind of help it stay there after the fact. But ultimately if you have the right keywords and the pictures and the conversions and the things we were talking about earlier, you're going to stay without the need of all of those additional reviews that you had to get before. So all of this comes back into, into tying into, to just setting and doing the simple things. Well, that we first talked about, and then ultimately too, yeah, you're going to continue to get the reviews or traditional way by the software follow up and just simply asking. So I think that's something that uh, we're probably all going to get better at. And my guess is all these review softwares are going to become, uh, they now have the incentive to become a little bit better than what they were at this point. Until I know you're really, really good at getting reviews after the fact. I mean, is that something you're going to put more emphasis on now? Or what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, it's, you know, you're right. Um, I was talking to someone earlier and I was just saying how, you know, before review groups and review services, there was a lot, you know, we did a lot more stuff for reviews. You know, there's a lot more effort put into it, and then once all these things came out, you know, and I'm I'm guilty of it as well. I, I stopped doing all that stuff. I was just like, oh, if I just need 100 reviews, that's easy. I'll just give away 100. Versus, um, you know, putting more time into your email copy or, um, you know, doing 
connecting with your customers more. So I think what ends up what it, what truly is going to end up happening is, you know, it's just we we're going back to our roots, right? Going back to what Amazon is about is that's customers and um, you know making sure you just give them the best experience. And so it does mean you know you're going to have to fix your your emails every once in a while. And you know I've done that throughout the years, but I just never probably put as much time and effort as I should have. All right. Well, you know, again, too, I'm trying to think if you're on the other end of this, you're thinking, man, I got to start doing some work. I got to start doing some other things. Just under the what is worth category from somebody who had retail stores and malls for 10 years. And that's like 10 to nine or 10 to whatever it is, nine 30 every night, seven days a week. This is nothing. <laughs> the quantity of work and things we're talking about here, this is nothing compared to running traditional brick and mortar businesses. This is still a, a part-time thing. Maybe this is just a few more moments a month, but these are things that we should have been doing all along anyway. And if we would have been doing them, then we still would have outdistanced everybody because again, other people aren't doing them. This is now the barrier to entry that most people won't do and why I think a lot of people will fall out. Yeah, it, it's actually surprising, Mark. Um, how, how, it's not a lot of work, it isn't, but it's it's one of those things where, um, yeah, we've just, we've gotten lazy about it. I know. That just shows you how good this opportunity is, that if we make it 10 times harder, it's still the easiest thing out there, you know? <laughs> the other thing, I mean, I go on rants about pictures. I go on rants about copy. But also, my biggest rant is about inventory, because time and time again, I see people keep too much of, of, of their, their product or too many units of their product in inventory. And part of this is, is not having some of the flexibility with suppliers that you get when you have higher volume. So we talked a little bit before, one of the strategies here, one of the 10 strategies was to increase your inventory. But the other thing here too is, is by, by doing this, you can still come up and ask your supplier for shorter production times. The less time it takes for you to get restocked, the less inventory you need to keep and the less money you got tied up in that inventory. And then you can certainly take that money, it's what's called opportunity cost in economic terms, Take that money, invest it in other items, and then turn that product over several times, and you're ultimately going to have more money in your pocket at the end of the year. Again, we're all defined by our decisions. One of the biggest issues I see is people keep way too much money or product in inventory, and ultimately the right quantity is what it takes for you to get restocked for the time it takes to get restocked in a little cushion. And it's not any more complicated than that. You increase it in, Christmas, or in Christmas and you decrease it other times. I mean, it's, 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 it, it ain't rocket surgery, you know, but it's one of those things that people will have 18 months worth of inventory in stock sometimes. And that's thousands of dollars you got sitting on the shelf that should be turning over with other products making you money. The other thing you can do, and this is something that Matul started doing as he has grown his business, is he's, once you get established and you start ordering more consistent and bigger quantities and the supplier starts to become dependent on your volume, Ask for smaller, more frequent orders. That's something you can do. It's even okay if you have to pay for those a little bit more because in that regard, then, then you still are having your, your less money tied up. But the other thing too, again, expand out of the market so you have higher volumes and ultimately you'll come into, into being able to do this. And I don't want to touch on inventory management. I know it's dull. I know it's boring. But this is one of those topics that will make you thousands of dollars a month because I assure you, based on my large sampling of sellers over the last few years, very few people understand this and even fewer do it well. If you can master this one concept, you'll increase your profits 40, 50% minimum. Well, the other thing in this too, there was a book and I think it was a book and some of you may know what I was talking about. It might've been a story, an article, TV show. I don't know what it was, but it was saying that really your income typically is an average of some of your best friends. Now, I don't know if that's really true or not, but it was in certainly an interesting premise. And I think as we go through topics like this, the, the eight topics I just went over are very, very simplistic on the surface. But you can get into as much depth as you wanted and how to on specifics in every one of those eight. And each one of those is enough to, to give you a breakthrough to, to, to literally revolutionize your business. So I think part of that begins with who you're hanging out with. And we all start out taking a course. We all start out hanging out with beginning people. And some people progress and some don't. But I think the thing to take away from this is that if, you're, if you ever, if you came to me through one of the, through the Head Start course, that course was really only designed to help you create and launch your first product and get going, nothing more. But are you still hanging out with the same people the same way in the same forums and still expecting some kind of advanced results and expecting breakthroughs? I think that's unrealistic. So ultimately, I would ask you is where you're getting your information 
And are you getting that information from people who are on the same path as you just farther down? Or are you getting that from people who are you, are you, are you getting it from people who are behind you who just like being loud? Ultimately in this, you want to follow people on the path who were farther down the path from you and around the corner. So when you kind of get stuck in the, in the trees or covering the path, you can yell at them and they can say, come this way, right? That's kind of metaphorically what you want to do is kind of always be with somebody who been doing a little bit longer, but on the same path, just farther down. Also, I want you to talk about, think about investing in yourself. Because if you think about this, everything we talk about, whether it's getting trademarks or some of these other things, people take shortcuts. They don't want to do things. They don't want to run this like a real business. They just want to sell an Amazon product. And if you have the mentality where you're doing that, and that's the first thing I said about having a long-term strategy, ultimately, the first bump that comes along, you're going to be pushed to the side. And if you think about yourself, this is truly you are running a business. It can be a significant business if you so choose. But all businesses, all real businesses invest in their business. Marketing consultants, whatever, ton of stuff, they invest in the business. And they do this to ultimately do what we're trying to do and what we're all here for and the premise of this of this of this webinar was to stay ahead of, well, to stay in business, but ultimately to stay ahead of that their competition while they're in business. So I want you to ask yourself right now, how are you running your business? Are you running it like a real business where you're reinvesting back in yourself and your education and your knowledge, or are you like 99% of Amazon sellers and you're on the most powerful drug in the world, which is hopium. Hopium means you just do something and you sit back and you watch and you hope that it comes true. <laughs> well, you know, that's a funny way to run a business, but inevitably that's how many, many people run your business. And my guess is there's a few of you right now, if you're being honest, that's kind of the person you see in the mirror. That's kind of the way you run in the business. I hope not. However, there's probably a little more truth to that to many people than not. But ultimately, people who invest in themselves are the ones who, who usually win. So, Matul, before we go on, is there anything you want to add out of these 10? Or you want to throw out anything? Or No, I'm, no, I, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I think, I, you know, sorry, just one thing um, on slide nine when you're talking about, you know, being around people who are, more successful. Um, it's it's this is funny because I was thinking about this the other day. You know, after I, I saw these slides, and I was like, um, and you know, just and this is going to be somewhat of a little tangent, but I'll go quick. You know, when I started, I started in 2014 before there were Facebook groups. Um, the only thing that was around was the big course that everyone spent lots of money on, and I wasn't part of that course. I actually had a friend who did this, and you know, when I got into my journey, I didn't have anyone. I literally figured everything out myself and it, it was, it sucked. Um, you know, and then I, I met, um, I started following some people and then I got into this mastermind and that's how I met Mark. Um, and then obviously, you know, Mark invited me to the Head Start and then I met more and more people and then I started realizing the power of being around other people who are in the same boat as you. Um, you know, I, it, it, and that's one of the things I've noticed that um, talking to other people, you know, that they, they, they love having the ability to talk to other people who are selling on Amazon and seeing what they're doing and things like that. Um, you know, not being around other successful sellers is a lonely place to be. I'll echo that. And that's, you know, we're behind a computer screen and, you know, it's just, it's, that's one of the reasons why I started doing all these courses and things. I missed the human contact. But I actually spent 20 grand at the beginning of this year to be part of a group to help me and coach and mentor me. And not only this, but just ultimately making better decisions. And I've gotten that money back very easily. So it's just hanging out with who you, who, whether that's your five best friends is average, you know, I don't know. But I thought that's a good premise to start this thought process because, again, we all realize our relatives and friends have no clue of what we do. They can't process it. <laughs> you know, while they get up at six o'clock in the morning, drive in rush hour traffic and come back and, you know, go through the, the, the hamster routine, you know, we have the opportunity to do this. So I think especially in what we do, it's important to have, to have that human contact and other people who were, that's why I like these live events we do. You just get to talk to people, meet people on that same path. But anyway, just here we did, we want you to stay committed for the long term. I want you to be open to new ideas. And look into manufacturing in new ways, uh, however that might be, different countries, different processes. Rethink the way you deal with suppliers. Ask for different terms. Maybe they're okay. I want you to invest in better pictures and copy and act like a real company. Be willing to market and do things. Adapt to changes. 
improve your inventory management, hang out with sellers and invest in yourself. Now, if you look at those things that really, you know, listed, you know, one to 10 there, that really doesn't seem like that much to do, but I'm convinced if you do these things and variations of them, I think you will ultimately be more successful whether we had review changes or not. These are things we should have been doing anyway. And my hope by putting things together like this is that right now you're thinking, gosh, there's more I can do. There's more I should have done. Gosh, I could kick myself for not doing some of these because I know this is right. There's nothing revolutionary here. I'm not telling you this is the secret algorithm. This is not the lose 50 pounds in a week pill here. This is basic stuff you've heard before. You know it's true, but we all need to be reminded from time to time. Because again, I'm convinced, as I say, or always, always say, the dumber I get, the more money I make. I do these things. I can always do them better. I'm no different. I'm not immune to, you know, things like that. But I, I do these things, and I always have. And this is why I always have outdistanced most of my competition in every business I've ever been in. This is what people do to run successful businesses. All right. Because ultimately, I still believe that being an Amazon private label seller is the fastest way to a six figure and beyond income period. Okay. You're probably sitting here thinking now you're maybe kicking yourself saying, gosh, I could do some of these things. I can, it, it's possible for me to run Facebook ads. It's possible for me to, to set up pages where I can do these coupons, or maybe I can find better ways to negotiate with suppliers. Maybe I can expand into, into Europe if I'm in the United States or vice versa. But you know, I'm really not quite sure how to do it. And you, you've hit the proverbial wall. Well, if that's the case, I don't want you to feel that way because everybody goes through that. As Matul was talking a minute ago, he didn't have anybody to help him. Well, you're fortunate you got people who are on that path and, and uh, have been down it many, many years. So in this, we want to tell you, what if you had a place where you could stay ahead of these changes? You know, a place that didn't hold anything back, where it was shared their strategies and, and things that were working well for them. And you had access to mentors who are some of the most experienced and successful police or sellers on the entire planet. And you had a forum to be around other people who were also experienced. You can network with and share ideas in an advanced level, not just the basic stuff of what's the difference between a UPC and an FNSKU. You know, that stuff gets old after you've been in this a while, right? Well, I want to introduce the, the private label Academy to you. And I noticed uh, some of the people we have on here are already in that we're gosh, we're always thankful to have you here and glad you're part of that. But for those of you who are not familiar with the Academy, I think this is, well, just a quick overview of what it is. It's, it's a community. It's a community that was designed solely to help you stay ahead of your competition. Really, when you take, think of the Head Start course, or when you're trying to get started, that's almost like a one-on-one level college course. Private Label Academy is 201, 301, 401, and it's really after you've launched a product and you're ready to go, or either when you're really, really serious about, about doing your business and you want to be around other people who are, again, on that same path. So it's really the next level after you've learned all of the basic stuff. And it's really designed to give you knowledge and access to other sellers and, and with the goal being that you having a sales breakthrough. Really, the Academy is, is a variation of six things. It's, uh, we break it up to where we have live events each week, but it's going to be a monthly advanced workshop. It's uh, monthly hot seats, and hot seats are where we look at a page and break it down and try and make it better. Live question and answers. Uh, group mastermind sessions to really help grow and scale your business. Uh, a Facebook community where you can have daily posts and support for answering questions. And then a training library of content so you can see previous workshops and, and events. And then, of course, I'll see access to other Amazon sellers. Each month we have a theme, uh, it, and uh, maybe that's something that's uh, finding products. Maybe it's dealing with suppliers. Maybe it's selling in multiple markets. Could be whatever it is. But we have a theme, and then we try and have all the other events tied to that theme. So the first week of each month is we're going to have a live online workshop, and it's going to teach in depth and detail about particular topics. Nothing held back, nothing to after the fact. Everything is, is everything you know. And uh, so you see some examples. I talked about that a second ago. Maybe it's about scaling, using sourcing agents. Like we talked about that. That's one of the 10 things ago or from a minute ago. But whatever that is, the workshop is the foundation for the rest of the month. And then we'll have the hot seats. Well, we if you are a part of the academy, you want to have your page looked at. Well, we can go over that. Or we can go over somebody's generic page that we find that we think is particularly interesting. 
but ultimately we'll break that down. We'll look in the title, we'll look in the keywords, we'll look in the pictures and copy and make suggestion, suggestions. We did this in Florida uh, recently and that the, the seller's already made some changes and I think he's already improved his sales quite a bit. So this is something that whether it's your page or somebody else's, you can use these same tips and constructive comments to improve your sales page regardless of what it is. This one is huge. This is our group mastermind. This is probably the most valuable feature by most members. And what this is, is that once a month, we're going to be able to get in and discuss your actual business. We're going to put people as we, um, depending on maybe skill level and different things, but we've been doing this now to where uh, it, it's, it's through a software that we have where you see everybody's picture on the screen to where you're actually able to, it kind of looks like the Brady Bunch, you know, where you have everybody on the screen there where everybody has a chance to talk about their business and talk about what goes well, talks about, uh, talks about uh, just different questions or obstacles you might have. And then the rest of the group tries to help you with those things. And then it goes around and the next person talks and you try and help them. It's really, uh, it's basically the give help to get help format. And that's kind of philosophy of how I try and do everything because I believe that is a long-term strategy for success. And this is really Academy favorite, and I guess it's priceless to, to have some people who are on that same path farther along help you. And it's funny, Matul and I were even talking after the conference in Florida that even there were some people who were brand new, they have perspectives on things that once you get into something, you, you, you don't have anymore. And they're able to see things differently. And we found several good ideas from some of the brand new people who were there about how to do things. So whether they're ahead of you or behind you, this is a probably the most valuable thing. Yeah, and... Just wanted to interject real quick. Um, you know, one of the biggest things is, you know, we 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 see each other's Facebook picture, and that's that's kind of how you know everyone. Um, what I what I really enjoy about these masterminds is you actually get to see people up up close and live. You know, um, you know, you're talking to them, you're you're seeing you know, their office, and you're you know, um, it, it gives you this level of uh, connection that you can't get from just a Facebook group. Um, and you know what was really cool was when we went to Private Label Live, there were a couple people from the Academy there, and it was great to go and just meet, see people that you already kind of sort of knew. Yeah, you um, felt like you, you know, know them before you saw them on the other side of the room. Right, and, you know, the biggest, the biggest, biggest benefit is, you know, you might not, you might not become friends with everyone. But there will be a couple of people that, you know, you just kind of gravitate towards. And then, you know, if you have an issue, you just that's who you go to, you know. And it's like, um, you know, you build friendships, you know, through this. Yeah, I was thinking about probably, you know, I, I live in the same place where I grew up pretty much. And, you know, I've got friends I still see from high school and whatever. But probably 90% of the contact I have is with people within the Amazon community. And they all came from you know, some format similar to this or the course or something. And it's, uh, I was thinking about that the other day is that I don't know what I'd have done if it wouldn't have been for this. I don't know who I'd be talking to now, you know, again, be back to very lonely again, but yeah, the, the human contact and the connections that that's what a group like this is for. The Q and A's, uh, ultimately this gives you the opportunity at the end of the month to wrap things up with any questions you might have. Because ultimately, the whole purpose of the academy is to teach you, give you more confidence, motivation, all this kind of stuff. But uh, it's extremely helpful to be able to have somebody to ask whatever you want. The uh, Think Tank Forum, I think, is kind of nice in that this is our Facebook group, and this is where you have the ongoing support of the community. You can ask questions, have them posted, just like any other group, except that this is not a, quote, free group where you get all the mindless stuff in there that's all basic content. You got people in here who have bypassed all of that, and the conversations, quite frankly, are at a higher level than you get in some of the newer groups. So if you're not new anymore and you're serious about your business, the new groups are not necessarily where you want to hang out. You want to, you know, once you graduate from being a freshman, you want to hang out in the sophomore group and the junior group. You don't want to go back and hang out with the freshman anymore. The content library is something that we've been doing this academy for over a year now, so we're tweaking and experimenting and growing, getting better every month, but we've accumulated quite a bit of training content, previous workshops and other, other webinars, different topics that we've done and we've recorded. So if you, uh, when you come in, you can go back and watch any of those. If you have a particular interest today, or you can watch them over time, however you want. And we understand we're dealing with people from all over the world. And it's funny, even at private label live, we had people from, as we said earlier, from Central America all the way to Australia. And when I take people to China, we've had people from like, I think, 15 different countries now. 
this is a worldwide scenario we're dealing with. So you certainly don't have to be in United States time to be able to do things. We typically do the workshops during the day. However, they're always recorded so you can watch them at whatever time is, is convenient for you. There are some bonuses in this. I have my resource guide that includes everything from lawyers to, we talked about, uh, Matul mentioned uh, freight forwarders and brokers and all this kind of stuff. So we got people listed in there, connections that I have made by my time and effort and expense going to China that you just contact through email or phone, you make arrangements with your shipping. It's all the things are discounts. So also too, because we have such a, a large and good community, I get contacted all the time for people who want to offer our group discounts because they want to work with us. So we've got all kinds of things in there as well. And that's everything from software to photography to about anything you want. Uh, the uh, other part of this is uh, is you've got access to the other Amazon sellers in the group. And that, that's something we were talking about, Madhul just mentioned earlier. This will help you stay motivated to succeed because uh, we encourage people to, to talk about their successes. And ultimately, that will help motivate you as well as cheer you on. And then when you get in these groups and some of these things, when you say you have certain goals, it's going to help you be accountable. And I really realize and understand a lot of people need that. I think it's a nice thing to have. And again, plus it's nice to develop the friendships that Matul was talking about and I was talking about earlier. And again, it's it's nice to see people when we go to these live events. I don't I don't need to say anything other than hello and then everybody just starts gravitating to everybody and making friendships. So it's a it's a nice thing to do when that goes on virtually. And I know a lot of people uh, contact each other outside of the group as well. So where do you go from here? Uh, the group now outside of the academy, there are similar groups that charge three hundred dollars a month. They got uh, over a thousand members, and they're doing it on an annual basis, which means that's three grand a pop. Well, I don't, I don't. Well, what is that? More than three grand a pop, and I think that's reasonable because the information you get out of it—if you get one thing to help your business, you got to be able to pay for that very, very easily. But our academy is not anywhere near that much because I just—I've never been one to, to gouge for money in anything that we do. I try and keep it consistent because I don't want anybody to be excluded because of price. It's something that you join on a monthly basis, and you can cancel at any time. And ultimately, so where you go from here is I'd like to invite all of you to join the Academy and the amount that you see today is a price you'll pay for as long as you're a member. And so if you stay and it's two years now, you'll be saying paying the same price. If you leave and want to come back, then it'll be whatever the then current price, but you'll lock that current price in when you join now. And then as we continue to grow this and get it where we want, that amount will go up for future members. So by doing that today, you're getting the, the the discounted price from the future as well as being able to lock in your price. So that's one of the things that uh, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to cap out membership when we get to the quantity we want and then have an application process thereafter. But anyway, one of the reasons it's not $300 a month is that we're doing this really because we just want to have a format that, that helps other people and ultimately it helps us by being around other people in our own Amazon businesses as well. I don't know how many people come up to me and then they'll say something to the effect that implies that they don't even realize that I sell Amazon products. <laughs> well, I do, and I sell a lot of them, and, and this helps me be an Amazon, better Amazon seller as well. So we're not looking for a large group here. We want to keep this a little bit more select, and it's not going to have unlimited numbers. But what we found to this point is that some people in a group like this are very active in how they participate, and so just want to watch, and that's fine. But we don't have enough people in there to have the activity that we want. So we dropped the price dramatically here so we could get more people in. Now, again, once we get some more people, that price is going to go back up quite a bit. So the whole thing about doing it now is that uh, you're going to be able to, to get this price, this introductory price, if you will, and lock it in so before other people come in. So to find out all the information and the pricing of what that is, we can go to, go to markscottadams.com and then go to the Academy. So we'll take some questions here in a second, but uh, Matul, is there anything you want to add to, to what I just went over? Um, no, I don't actually. Uh, I'm, yeah, you said it, said it perfectly. Okay. All right. Well, what let's do, let's go in and, um, Let's go in and let's see if we can take some questions here. And again, what I'll try and do typically we'll get some repeat questions and ultimately I will miss people's questions. And if that's the, and if that's the case, please don't take it personally because it maybe it was redundant or either I just, I simply just missed it. But, uh, Matul, can you see the screen? 
the question? I can. Okay. Yep. All right. I was asking earlier where everybody's from. You see where Mr. Bogdan said he was from there? The North Pole. Mr. Davenport said he was from the moon. <laughs> I think they were all trying to say who was the farthest away. <laughs> so, so Derek has a question. Did I, wait a minute. Wait, 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 did I miss it? Yeah, here they, here, yeah, Mike's got one too. Okay, so Derek asks, uh, how, much, how much do you see Amazon PPC increasing after the review changes? Um, so I, I wish I could give you an exact number. Uh, I think it'll, this is this is one of those things where I think there's going to be a lot of uh, changes that are going to occur over the next month or so. Um, just because you know, obviously now I've seen a lot of people who are talking about, well, you just launch a product and turn on PPC. Um, what what will happen is there'll probably be a short term increase. Um, and then it'll level off because one, um, most people who are brand new don't understand PPC as as well as they should, and they think that price is the only determination determiner of whether or not they're going to get shown or not, and that's not true. Um, and so, as they spend more and more money trying to get their product launched, um, they're just not going to be able to sustain it. And so there's going to be a time period where it's going to increase, but then as as people start focusing in on it more and more and more, um, I think it'll come down. Do Academy members have free access? This is one from Mike. Have free access to the recorded events such as Private Label Live? Typically, Mike, anybody who goes to an event is going to have free access to that. I think you should have since you attended uh, Private Label Live. You should have you should, on the piece of paper with all the links you've got uh, access to those recordings but uh not uh just if somebody can miss something and be part of the academy no the academy is so inexpensive it's 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 hard to do things like that but uh, you will have discounts with certain softwares and different things that are out there all right bradley has a question it says should i still join the review group within my first 30 days at this point, Bradley, I would say yes, and really we're still, even though it's been a while since the review changes, we're still kind of waiting for some inevitable shakeout to, to come out, and, and you know, we're really waiting to see what the next thing Amazon does. Because, again, I, I don't. the older I get, the more I find if I just wait a little bit on, on, uh, on uh, decisions, I find that, that I make a little bit better decisions. My 25-year-old self would hate me now because you're being that old guy who just takes forever to make a decision. <laughs> but by doing that, you end up making fewer decisions, but better decisions. So ultimately, I think in that is that probably what will happen is that at least in the short term, we will turn that into into more of a deal group, maybe, or either where people will be able to offer their products, uh, either some type of discount or free, just with the intent of being able to get the conversions and sales that comes with, with doing that. So that's probably how that's going to going to shake out but just sit tight on that and we'll get that figured out but regardless go ahead and, and, and join it okay Derek's got a question you want to you want to take that one yeah Derek asks have you either of you been successful in utilizing bloggers or youtubers in promoting your product what about social media in general is that a decent avenue of increasing sales so well, go ahead yeah go ahead Mark I would say I have and I think big part of it is is you know, I use YouTube extensively for a variety of things, but I think too is that uh, creating, I mean, we, we, I don't remember which number this was, but this is when we're talking about marketing the product where whether it's either YouTube ads or YouTube videos, describing your products, things like that. I think there's a viable market for that. The other thing, one of the strategies talking about bloggers is that let's say you've got your certain product. Again, let's just say pet supplies. You find somebody who's a blogger on, on pets. You know, they're dying to figure out how to make money. They don't know how to make money. Maybe they got a few links as Amazon Associates slash affiliates for some pet products. And you sell dog leashes, for instance, and they got dog leashes on there. You find them and say, okay, you're getting roughly 6% for referring this item to Amazon. If you suggest my item, you'll still get the same 6%. And at the end of the month, you send me a screenshot of your sales of that particular item from your affiliate da or your associate dashboard, it's called. I'll pay you another 10%. So they're, they're, they just basically just tripled their income almost. You can pick whatever number you want, 15 5%, you know, whatever it is. 
But ultimately what you're doing is you've just doubled their affiliate income by having them suggest your product, which obviously you have still more than enough to pay from, from the profits of your product. So that's a strategy that I think is, is a worthwhile thing if you want to do something with, uh, with bloggers. But I think social media in general, I think there's a lot of time, there's a lot of effort that goes into it, and I don't think you can do all of it well. I think you should pick one strategy that you're comfortable with and then get really good at that. Yeah, I was just going to add, um, it's something I'm doing currently, and I've, I've learned a lot about, actually. Um, the, the, the only problem with social media is that people assume, um, they, they don't do it the right way. Uh, they, they, t they try and do the thing where they just throw sales on social media and expect sales to come in and things like that. What I've, what I've learned about social media is that it's a very, very give-oriented give platform. Um, and if you are able to provide enough value for people to actually care about your brand, um, you know, it, it, it can be very, very, very good. Uh, you could literally turn on a faucet. Now, this only works for, you know, if you have, I, I, I truly believe you have to be very niche specific to make it work extremely well. Um, you know, if you're just if you're just importing stuff from China and just slapping your label on it, and you're not creating a brand at all. You're just you've kind of you kind of have like what's called like a holding company. I don't know if social media is probably the right avenue for you, um, but you know, you YouTube for uh, videos on your products, things like that. Uh, bloggers that works, they are great. You just have to make sure you find the right bloggers. I I use the rule of thumb that if they don't have a their own website, I don't use them. You know, a lot of bloggers have the something 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 at dot blogspot dot com. You know, to me that that means they're not serious enough to have their own website. You know, they're not willing to pay for it. So I, I usually don't use bloggers that don't have their own specific URL. But I could go into social media like crazy, but. Um, it can be very successful if you utilize it correctly. All right, Michael has a question here talking about uh, the review programs. He's saying, can you still offer your product at a discount as long as you don't ask for a review? Yes. You can certainly promote your product uh, and discount it any way you want. Really what you're doing, instead of asking for the review at the beginning, you're asking for it at the end. So, you know, that's really the only fundamental change really that's, that's happened. So, you know, and I don't think it's that much of a difference. So if you're driving ad somewhere to a product that, is, you know, deal of the day, 50% off, you know, that kind of stuff, a Groupon type scenario, then that's fine. I mean, there's nothing that says you can't discount your product as long as you don't do it in conjunction with the re expectation of a review. But the follow-up emails, did you like our product? Can we help you? Is everything okay? Oh, by the way, can you give us a review? You still can do that. Uh, you're also asking, you're talking about the, the, the amount for the membership. That's on the, go to the marshgotadams.com academy and all that information is there. All right, um, got uh, one here from Giles that says, uh, if you join, will you get access to the recording of the recent Orlando seminar? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, it's not going to record. It's not going to. It's a separate issue on things like that. But the amount for the Orlando thing is so inexpensive. It's a. It's a. You know, it's a nominal amount. Okay. Um, any program for Chesapeake? I can't answer earlier. Couldn't answer earlier. Okay, I'm not sure really what you're what you're what you're asking there, Alan. If you want to retype that, I'll be glad to try and answer it. I just other than what you're saying there. Um, Greg saying he's bought the or the Orlando recording. It's a great value. Thank you, Greg. Uh, I think it is. I mean, you know, people paid a whole lot more than that. And and quite frankly, two years ago we did that. Uh, did that program and it was a thousand bucks is for one day. Well, for the type of content that we did this past, well, whenever it was, we were back in, back in Orlando, but I decided to, to limit the number of people. We actually turned people away to come to that event and put more content into it and make it a little more substantive in its nature. And, uh, as I was driving back and trying to review the event in my mind, I was very pleased with what we did. I'm a big believer in going to events for the networking and those types of things, but the information alone, as nominal as I made it, it's more than enough to, to it's, it's very inexpensive amount. But anyway, thank you for that comment, Greg. Um, yeah, out of that, so that's, uh, if anybody's got any other questions, we'll be glad to address things. But, 
going back to what we're talking about here and building your strategy and getting ahead of your, of your, of your, of your competition, you're just going to have to do some things a little bit differently here. And again, that doesn't mean necessarily be harder, but again, ultimately I want you to walk away from today's things of, of what can you do? And I hope by just touching on some of these topics that you are going to walk away realizing that you're not out of control. You still control your own destiny. You still, with a couple of good decisions and a little bit of action and execution, you still can easily rise and continue your, your Amazon business. But like all things, it just, uh, it just, it just, it just ends up going out to, um, uh, it just ends up being something that's just all my, going back to what we're talking about mindset. So with that said, unless anybody else has got any other questions, um, Atul, is there yeah, anything you want to you want to add? Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing. You know, I was just thinking about what we do in the academy, and you know, it, when when you start getting past the beginner stuff and you get into like more of the advanced stuff, um, you know, there's a lot of people who do things and they're testing things and they spend money on stuff. So for example, let's just talk about social media real quick. You know, I've, I've put money into it. You know, I have someone who runs mine and I'm testing things and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people don't freely talk about that stuff going, you know, in, in beginner groups. They just don't, you know, because um, it gets lost in the shuffle. Whereas like in the academy, we're always, people are doing different things. We talk about that stuff, uh, especially on the hangouts. Like, you know, one person is doing one thing and I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. I should find out more information about that. Or hey, let's let's talk offline. Or you know, I share things that I'm currently doing. Um, you know, and one of the biggest benefits to that is that you will you will be able to share stuff that you're doing, and you'll be able to learn from other people who are sharing things that they're doing, and that's that's working or not working um, on a weekly, monthly basis versus just kind of sitting around and hoping somebody gives, you know, some sort of like webinar on something, which I can't, you know, it's, that's usually doesn't happen um, on an advanced level. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. Ultimately it's like one plus one equals three. You no, know, cause you got everybody else kind of out scouring things. When one person succeeds, you get to benefit from that. So, I mean, it's, it's truly the, 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 the concept of the group is set up to, to focus on that. Uh, Jesse has a question here. It says, uh, can you expand on using one prop or one time use coupon codes in conjunction with an ad? Yeah, Jesse, the way that works is that when you go to, to your, your Amazon seller dashboard, you can create either one use or multi-use codes. I mean, up until recently, they didn't always have one use codes. So when you were running an ad, uh, when I was running Facebook ads a couple of years ago, I would run an ad to a page. They'd sign up for the email, I'd take them the page and give them the code, and then you'd have a link to take them to your product on Amazon. Now, if somebody were unscrupulous, they could have taken that one-use code, shared it with however many people they wanted to share it with, and everybody could have come in and bought out all of my inventory. Okay, You just didn't think of things at that time until people figured out how to do it. And when people did, then Amazon kind of came up with multi-use coupon or single-use coupon codes. And I might have said that backwards, but multi-use means you can use them over and over again. That's what we're running there. But single-use coupon codes where now you set it up and it's say you want to give away 100 products at a discount, say 20% off. You set all these things up in the dashboard. And then so what it's going to do is going to give you a CSV file of, say, 100 different codes. And then what you do is you have your landing page and you're going to up, you're going to, and software does all this. You buy plugins for your things and all this kind of thing. But you do that, then you upload that CSV file to this plugin page or page with a plugin. And then if I'm running that same ad, they sign up for their email, it takes them to that page, and that person one, it gets the one code. And then the next person who comes in and gives their email, it takes from the page, it gives them the second code, and so on. So that person at most is able to use that code once, single-use coupon code, so that way they can't go in and share that code with somebody else to, to go in and deplete all your inventory. So it's really kind of a neat setup and technology has advanced to the point where as this industry has evolved, people have written software like that. So if you want to run ads, and again, it doesn't mean necessarily Facebook ads. It could be uh, a link off of a YouTube video. It could be whatever page you send them to that, that is, 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 is how you would set that up. But I think that's something that's going to come back to be important now 
versus versus uh, what it was. It died of importance as it became easier to do reviews. And then um, and then follow Jesse follows up and says, is that a social ad meant to drive traffic to your personal website and then one time use coupon code fulfills the product through Amazon? Yeah, the, 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 the process is very simple. However you run an ad, whether it be an Instagram post, uh, a paid ad, a Facebook ad, whatever it is, you run into a separate page. Because remember, you don't want to send to everybody directly to your, to your Amazon page because it's going to kill your conversions. Anybody who's truly interested is going to fill out their, their name and email. It's going to take them to the page with a code. And then the next step, you're trying to weed out people, but you're sending them directly to the, to the page. You give them the code. Then they take the code with the link directly to your Amazon sales page. So by doing this, you get a sale and you get a, a, a 100% conversion from this person going there. And then some of those people will even write reviews because you're going to follow up with them and say, hey, can you please write a review? No violation of terms of service, anything like that. But as Matul was saying, you can turn it on and off like a faucet if you have the ability and knowledge to run ads and have that, which is not a complicated thing. There's a learning curve, but it's a doable thing. Then you can drive as much outside traffic to you want, and ultimately you're going to leave your competition behind, which, again, one of the things of what we're doing here. Um, and uh, Lay says, uh, Mark Matul, thanks so much for your time and insight. Well, thank you for being here, Lay. So normally I like to keep these things to be about an hour. So unless somebody else has got any – uh, anything they want to add, want to say, gosh, appreciate everybody being here. Appreciate the questions. Hope this is helpful because ultimately I want you to, to think about this as your foundation, as your mindset, and then leave knowing there are some tangible things you can do to, uh, to make your business better. And then as far as the academy goes, we're doing some really wonderful things over there. It's underpriced and it's going to be underpriced for those who join now. We'd love to have you as part of the group if it's something that fits where you are in the business. So with that said, I want to thank everybody and see you next time.